So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you to the Air Source Commons for hosting this event. Uh, to illustrate the discoveries I've made about effective inner source, I'll tell a story about my journey to effective inner source at Nike. You might have experienced a similar journey. You've joined a new company and want to collaboratively create code with people outside your immediate team, but you don't know where to start. That's where I was at in 2019 at Nike. My first step was to search source control for a backend service with clean code that included standard features like observability administration and secrets management. After searching many repositories, I found a suitable project and re reviewed it with my team. Uh, they, they decided on that one. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a community led project, but the community met our needs. So we moved on as we often do. At that moment, I realized there was an opportunity to increase collaboration at Nike, though I hadn't yet heard of the concept of Intersource. Over time, I learned about communities of practice at Nike, and funny enough, it was through Russ Rutledge. Russ was sitting at my at a desk within your, your shot, and I heard him talking about promoting developer communities of practice at Nike. I, later, I learned about the Intersource Commons and started learning about Intersource. After learning about developer communities, I attended several sessions and learned the project we borrowed from previously was derived from a Java blueprint maintained by a community of Java developers. Through this experience, I learned that community collaboration is a critical community co component of effective inner source. After several years at Nike, I was fortunate to land a new position as a principal engineer charged with deploying inner source at scale to support platform engineering. Thanks to my previous experience, one of my first steps was to start an inner source community of practice. I started by writing a vision and a mission, and then I consulted with a, several colleagues and got feedback. After introducing them to the concept of inner source and the charter, I asked them where we'd like to focus our energy. My gut told me project discoverability would be provide would provide the most value. The community agreed, and we started a project discoverability initiative. We needed to keep track of our efforts, so we added our initiatives to a community backlog and started working on project discoverability. The backlog helped us stay on track and monitor our community's progress. To keep the project discoverability initiative focused, we crafted a clear problem statement and a diagram of our current and desired state of inner source to communicate our mission. We started by adding inner source projects to an internal wiki. However, we wanted a searchable catalog of projects. After brainstorming, the community learned about an internal developer intelligence team that after they joined a couple of meetups, they maintained a developer intelligence API that includes active directory records, GitHub repositories, agile squads, and more. It was a perfect fit for our immediate and long-term needs. We asked the team if we could make adjustments to the API, but unfortunately, the project was not intersource ready, which was very surprising, but it was an opportunity for us to promote intersource and make more connections. As a result of our intersource community's growing influence, we continued, we quickly convinced the team to make the developer intelligence project intersource friendly. It created a new major version with visibility into the project schema and expanded their documentation. Later, the developer intelligence team extended the API to allow queries by repository topics. We then settled on adding a Nike inner source topic to projects as a standard and introduced project discoverability. This is a significant win for our community in Nike. We were pretty excited about it. Today, we have many projects tagged with a topic and plan to catalog more projects by checking for repositories with a contributing.md file. We'll, can, we'll invite the project owners to our community and ask them to tag their projects. Now, with our limited resources, by the way, we had uh, two people that were driving Intersource at Nike. It was me and another colleague, and I was just including people as I could in the community. And this is where a lot of the effective, effectiveness came from. So we had produced our first exciting prospect for teams. As a result, more people joined the community and we expanded our efforts. 
to reinforce our community foundation, we returned to the basics and built an inner source recipe for our platform engineering handbook. Our handbook is an internal collection of best practices, standards, and guidance for platform engineers. We started the recipe by explaining why inner source is essential, our core principles, how to get started, and gratuitous links to the inner source commons. We also document how to use the developer intelligence API to find projects. We built the recipe through a series of mobbing sessions and added our mobbing process to the inner source as well, drinking our own wine a bit there. And after a few sessions, we finished the recipe and it assembled a robust core community. New people learned about our success, which led to more contributions. Behind the scenes, another team was creating an inner source directory. The inner source directory is viewable alongside open source projects, build system information, incident reporting, and other useful data points. And of course, that project is available for inner source and they used our guidance. So it was a direct win that the team experienced there. Next, we invited project owners to our inner source community to present why and how someone would want to contribute to their project while helping them make their projects discoverable and approachable based on our standard guidance. This led to even more contributions, newly discoverable projects, and a significant increase in cross-team collaboration. Today, we continue to grow thanks to the seeds we planted. For example, last week, I met a colleague building instructor-led training material, and he's standing up a community of practice. My colleague plans to build inner source training material as a community project, which will push inner source even further. Of course, I invited him to the inner source commons and asked him to reuse our reuse and contribute to our valuable resources to accelerate his efforts. Our next steps are to continue our project discovery efforts, promote more inner source and measure our progress. We have big plans to map our inner source projects to our global catalog of technical solutions. Once we have a mapping in place, we'll link to the platform business capabilities that our inner source projects support. This will help us more effectively demonstrate the direct business value of inner source to senior leadership and further drive adoption across Nike. If you haven't heard about the inner source program office working group, we have a great group of people building valuable artifacts for inner source program office leaders. One of the reasons I joined the ISPO working group was to build KPIs to measure our progress. As a result of our efforts, we have a set of goals, questions, and metrics published and a clear contribution to the inner source comments.